America at war. When our nation called upon him, a soldier of extraordinary talent, education, and devotion to duty was ready to step forward and lead. David H. Petraeus. During V Corps' drive to Baghdad, Major General David Petraeus led the 101st Airborne with skill and determination through some of the fiercest fighting south of Baghdad, in Karbala, Hilla, and Najaf, followed by the longest hellebore assault in military history to reach Nineveh province. His post-combat leadership in Mosul in the early days of Operation Iraqi Freedom helped set the tone for winning the hearts and minds of the Iraqi people. In June of 2004, he was promoted to Lieutenant General and became the first commander of the Multinational Security Transition Command, responsible for training, equipping, and mentoring Iraq's growing army. In 2006, as Commanding General U.S. Army Combined Arms Center at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, David Petraeus brought together the culmination of his nearly 30 years of experience as a soldier, scholar, and military strategist to author the U.S. Army Field Manual on Counterinsurgency. And in 2007, he returned to Iraq as commanding general of the multinational force, where he implemented the counterinsurgency and surge strategies that helped turn the corner in the war and ultimately lead to the successful transition to Operation New Dawn and the war's conclusion. But the journey for this extraordinary soldier, scholar, and military leader began many years before. David Petraeus grew up in the shadow of West Point, Cornwall on Hudson, New York. As a young boy, his desire to excel was evident in everything he did, his schoolwork, in sports, or at home. A no-excuses attitude instilled in him by his father, Sixtus Petraeus, a merchant marine ship captain. As a cadet at West Point, his naturally competitive drive and ambition, along with the self-discipline needed to succeed, flourished. The great infantrymen heroes he studied in history class, MacArthur, Eisenhower, Ridgeway, became the inspiration for his own military career goal to someday lead the Army. He would also meet his future wife, Holly Knowlton, whose father, Lieutenant General William Knowlton, was West Point's superintendent. Lieutenant General Knowlton became his military father, sharing his experiences in Vietnam with the young Petraeus and planting the seeds for his lifelong interest in counterinsurgency. David Petraeus graduated in 1974 in the top 5% of his class, a star man, and was commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Army. He and Holly were married in the West Point Chapel on July 6, 1974. After completing Ranger School with distinguished honor, the newly commissioned infantry officer headed off to Vicenza, Italy and the 1st Battalion, 509th Airborne Battalion Combat Team, and gained valuable experience working in the NATO environment with another early mentor, Colonel Keith Nightingale. His interest in counterinsurgency only deepened when he learned of the legendary French general and paratrooper, Marcel Bijard, and his experiences at Dien Bien Phu in Vietnam. After his tour in Italy, he was assigned to the 2nd Brigade of the 24th Infantry Division mechanized at Fort Stewart, Georgia, and distinguished himself as a company commander. He was selected to serve as aide-de-camp to Major General Jack Galvin, who would become another important mentor in his career development. Encouraged to further his military and civilian education, then Captain Petraeus attended the Command General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, graduating with top honor as the General George C. Marshall Award winner. He then received his master's degree in public administration and his PhD in international relations at Princeton University. He was promoted to major in 1985. With his studies completed, he served again with General Galvin as his military assistant at Supreme Command Headquarters in Europe. The desire to be back with infantrymen led Petraeus to being the operations officer to the 1st Battalion, 
30th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division. But it wasn't long before he was selected to be the aide-de-camp to General Carl Vono, U.S. Army Chief of Staff in Washington, D.C., where he gained valuable insight into how the Pentagon functioned and met another important career mentor in then-Colonel Jack Keane. With his promotion to Lieutenant Colonel, Petraeus took command of 3rd Battalion, 187th Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the Iron Rockassons. He established a solid reputation with his men as a leader who inspired iron fitness and discipline. In 1995, he had his first experience in setting up a civilian military UN task force as Chief Operations Officer, Operation Uphold Democracy in Haiti, lessons he would apply years later in his second tour in Iraq. With his promotion to Colonel, he was then selected for Brigade Command and assumed command of the 1st Brigade, 82nd Airborne Division. He returned to the Pentagon in 1997 to serve as executive assistant to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Hugh Shelton, once again gaining valuable insight and exposure to civilian military relations at the highest level of government. In 1999, with his promotion to Brigadier General, he returned to the 82nd as the Assistant Division Commander, deploying to Kuwait as part of Operation Desert Spring and Bosnia as part of Operation Joint Force. From the 82nd, he moved on to serve as Chief of Staff, 18th Airborne Corps at Fort Bragg, and was selected for promotion to Major General in 2001. From the West Point class of 1974 to March of 2003, all of David Petraeus's military training, education, and devotion to duty would prepare him for the ultimate test of leadership, Combat Command. Following the completion of his tour as commander of the multinational force in Iraq, he was nominated by the president in 2008 to command U.S. Army Central Command in Tampa, Florida. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates calling him the preeminent soldier scholar statesman of his generation and precisely the man we need in command at this time. On June 23, 2010, his country called upon him once again to serve in a combat command leading the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan. As the principal architect of the counterinsurgency strategy, General Petraeus successfully applied these hard-learned lessons from Iraq in a radically different theater of operation, helping to refocus the mission and leave his legacy in the hands of those he has mentored and led. Finally, on August 31, 2011, a grateful nation said thank you to General David H. Petraeus for his 37 years of distinguished service in the United States Army. But there was one more job for him to do. On September 6, 2011, David Petraeus was sworn in as the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, where he proudly serves today. It's my distinct pleasure and privilege to be with you here tonight to honor one of our military heroes and one of our nation's leaders, General Petraeus, my ranger buddy. General Petraeus and I came together in 1997. He was the XO for General Hugh Shelton when General Shelton was the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff and I was the senior enlisted aide. And right off of the bat, sir, you pulled me to the side and you gave me some great counsel and guidance. You gave me faith and confidence within myself to do my job. But at the same time, I built up that faith and confidence in you because you as a leader coming to me, giving me the direction to do what I was able to do, gave me the ability to do my job above and beyond the call of duty. And that was because I had a great leader such as yourself directing me and I knew that I could count on you. Thank you, sir, for all that you continue to do for all of us. I've known Dave Petraeus for over 25 years, having served in multiple assignments with him at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 
Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and also in the Pentagon. I also had the privilege of doing many assessments for him in Iraq and, and in Afghanistan in 2007, 2008, and the last couple of years uh, in Afghanistan. I'm absolutely convinced that you know, Dave Petraeus is clearly the most successful general of our time, and even more so the most celebrated one since World War II. Now look, he's had six combat commands as a general officer. He earned throughout his career distinction as a tactical and operational commander. He succeeded at every position he'd ever been in. But what he was able to do in Iraq and Afghanistan was shift to strategic leadership without giving up his hard-earned skills as a tactical and operational commander. And he could shift back and forth from strategic to tactical and operational with ease on the same day. This is not the norm. It is truly the exception, and it is generalship at its best. I'm absolutely convinced that Dave Petraeus certainly earned the distinction you're giving him today. But I believe the nation owes him one more, and that's the award of a five-star general for what he has achieved as a general officer and what he has done for this great nation of ours. Thank you. You know, a little over 20 years ago, when I was chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Colonel Petraeus was working for the Chief of Staff of the Army. And one day he came up to my office, uh, the Chairman's office, uh, bringing me something from the Chief, and we had a little chat. And I said to him, you know, Dave, maybe you ought to come work for me. That would be a step up for you. So I think you ought to think about coming and working for me. And he looked at me and then gave me one of those little Petraeus sardonic smiles, which said, no, I don't think so, sir. I think I'll stay with the Chief. He was very respectful about it, and I said, his decision and he went back to continue working for the chief. I thought to myself, you know, he may have just made a mistake. Boy, was I wrong. Look what's happened since that day when he turned me down. And I don't like being turned down, but it was the right thing for Dave. It was the right thing for the nation. Just look what he has done in the years that have followed. He has served at every level. And especially for the last 10 years, he has served the nation in a brilliant manner, a courageous manner a manner that is unlike any other officer I have ever served with. And so I can think of no one more deserving of this leadership award. And so Dave, I congratulate you. I'm very, very proud of you. I've watched you for all these years. And let me give a shout out to Holly as well for the service she has provided to this nation. I more than many people recognize the role that the spouse plays. And Holly has been there all the way. And now in her retirement, she continues to serve in a very, very important way to make sure that our veterans are taken care of. And so all assembled there, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. You know the warm spot in my heart for Leavenworth, for everything that happens at the Command and General Staff College. And a special congratulations to my good friend and colleague, Dave Petraeus, and to his partner in life, Holly. Thank you all very much. It is a great privilege for me to add my voice to this tribute for Dave Petraeus as he receives the Command and General Staff College Foundation's Distinguished Leadership Award. There could be no more appropriate recipient. Dave defines and personifies leadership. Dave and I were together in Iraq starting in early 2007. It was the beginning of the surge and the outlook was bleak. We both knew before we even arrived that while success would be difficult under any circumstances, failure was a virtual certainty unless the military and civilian efforts were fully synchronized and mutually reinforcing. And through that close association, I learned several important things. First, I knew I was in the presence of the greatest American soldier ever to command in battle. Second, I learned the value of judgment. If there is one single quality that defines Dave Petraeus, it is judgment. And third, I was and am in awe of his indomitable will and determination. I was proud to be his diplomatic wingman as the surge he directed turned the tide in Iraq. And I am proud to be his friend today as he takes on the challenge of directing the Central Intelligence Agency. Congratulations to David Petraeus for receiving the Distinguished Leadership Award. I was honored to serve with General Petraeus. I appreciate your service to our country, David. And my advice to you is, Get a little stronger on the mountain bike so you can rejoin Peloton One. God bless you.
a great American soldier, scholar, and leader, the Command and General Staff College Foundation is pleased to present General David H. Petraeus with the Distinguished Leadership Award for 2012.